During the email verification process, it's a good idea to limit how often an email recent can be requested. But please don't do this. Don't disable the recent button with no information on when it will be available. That would be a bad user experience. To properly communicate this information, we can use a countdown timer. So on my verification page, I have a section which displays the recent information. The first thing I want to do is to extract this into a component. I'll call my component recent timer. And from the verification page, we cut the block of code and paste it in it, while making sure that we import all the used components as well. Now we can export and use the recent timer component on the verification page, and everything should stay the same. Now in the verification component, we will need a few states. The first one will be resending email, which will be a boolean monitoring whether an email is currently being recent. Recent status will monitor the state of the recent system, and we can expect it to have one of these three values, recent, sent, and failed. If a recent has been sent successfully, the value will be sent. If it failed, the value will be filled. Otherwise, it will stay at recent. Time left to monitor the number of seconds remaining until a recent request will be allowed. Target time will be the maximum number of seconds for our timer. Active recent will be true whenever the system is ready to allow a recent request. The timer will be triggered at an interval and we need a variable to monitor that. Next, we need a function to calculate the time left. The function will accept a final time parameter. This will be a value in milliseconds, referring to when the timer is supposed to end in the future. The first thing we we'll do is to find the difference. So that will be between the final time and our current time. The current time can be calculated using the date function. We have a plus before the new keyword, which will convert the date value to an integer. It is a shorthand syntax for the past end property. If our difference value is greater or equal to zero, we want to set the value as the time left. Or because the value is in milliseconds, we want to divide it by a thousand and round the value. Value. Else, if the difference is less than zero, it means that there is no time to wait. So we set the time left to now, clear the current interval, and set active recent to true, which we will use to activate the recent button. Now we'll create a trigger timer function, which we will use to trigger the timer to work. The function will take a target time in seconds parameter, which will have a default value of 30. The first thing we will do is to set the received value as the target time. Now, since the timer is being triggered, it means that recent request should not be allowed. So we set active recent to false. Now we calculate our final time based on the received target time. This will be the current time plus the received target time in seconds. To convert it to milliseconds, we'll multiply it by a thousand. Now making use of the set interval function, we call calculate time left and pass our final time to it. The interval for this call will be a thousand milliseconds, which means that our function should be called every second. If you've enjoyed the video so far, Please leave a like so that you can reach more people. Now let's look at the situation at hand. Being on this page in the first place means that an email has been sent to the user after the sign up. So once the page loads, we don't want to allow a recent, but only after the target time that we set. So once the page mounts, we want to trigger the timer. And the use effect hook will enable us to do that. To prevent any memory leakage, once the component on mount, we clear the interval. Now we create a recent email async function, which will work on the implementation details later. At this point, we pass the states and the resending email function as properties to the recent timer. In the function, we destructure all the properties so that we can use them easily. Now over here, we have about three situations to handle. The first situation is when resending email is false. With this situation, there is a chance for a recent request to be granted. So we return the button. However, if the received active recent is false due to some reason, we want to disable the button. Still based on the active resend, if it is false, we want to change the opacity to 0.5. Also, we pass the resend email function to the unpress property. The text link content will also receive recent status as a property, which will be used to style the text depending on the value. Finally, we will use recent status as the value of the link. The next situation will be when resending email is true. In that case, we will disable the link completely. This is because we are in the process of resending the email and we can't allow another request. Inside the test link content, we put an activity indicator instead, which we will import from React Native. This will receive a color that we import from our styles. Now at this point, if active resend is true, and requesting a recent is allowed, we don't need to display the time left because there won't be any countdown. As a result of that, we want to display the info text only when active recent is false. Now inside the emphasize test, we will display the time left and fall back to the target time if time left is not available. 
Refreshing the app should cause the countdown timer to start. The state values that we are using for our conditions will be updated to the current app situation on receiving feedback from the backend. We will look at setting up our backend next, so please subscribe to stay informed. Thanks for watching.